Welcome back guys to another one. Today let's have a look at something really cool from any point of view when it comes to all-in-one coolers, the mighty Silverstone Ice Gem 360 AIO. It is epic. Since the Threadripper series was launched, very few companies managed to offer a full-size contact plate that can cover the whole IHS area from the CPU. Silverstone got discovered with their new Ice Gem series that are a great all-arounder cooling solution and to top it off the AIOs come with an aesthetic design to die for. The Ice Gem series is available in the most popular AIO formats, the 240, 280 and 360mm variants and today I have the top dog at 360. There is a lot of competition in this segment and the Ice Gem 360 can be had for around 175 bucks. I will link all of them in the description for you. The IO comes shipped in a simple yet effective thin packaging design and it makes it very clear that it fully supports the RGB from all of the main motherboard vendors. On the back, from left to right, we have the list of the main specs, the overall dimension for the rad and pump and then some of the main highlights. Inside everything is nicely stored and the rad has its own cardboard shell for extra protection for the fins. Here we have the instruction manual, the full bag of accessories, the three ARGB 120mm fans and the AIO pump rad assembly. All of the mounting hardware is stored in one ziplock bag and each socket has its own unique sealed bag. As you can see, Silverstone made sure that you can enjoy the RGB even if you don't have an available 5 volt RGB header on your motherboard. That's why the remote saves the day. Speaking of this, it has 3 buttons on it. The M switches between the mode, while the plus and minus buttons control the speed of the effects and the brightest levels. There's even an LED on the controller for various signaling like green to adjust the lighting effects, red to show you that it, you can adjust the speed, blue to adjust the brightness and yellow for when the lighting effect is on auto mode. Now here we have the three 120mm ARGB fans that are rated up to 2200 RPM which allows them to displace airflow up to 94 CFM with a static pressure of 3.2mm of water column. These specs are achieved with the help of the 11 translucent blades which are designed to maximize airflow. Then each fan has a pair of wires that come out of its rotor. One is 50cm long 4-pin PWM power connector while the other cable has a combo of 80cm plus 22cm in length because of its 4-pin proprietary connector and a 3-pin ARGB port. Now let's inspect the radiator which is made from aluminium and it has a very slick design. Its exact dimension is 394mm long, 120 wide and 28mm thick. Zooming in you'll notice that the rad has a density of 20 fins per inch and 12 flow channels where the coolant will travel. The build quality is spot on with no imperfection to the eye nor touch. The IceGem AIO 360 is using reinforced leak proof 400mm long rubber tubes that are finished in an excellent nylon braided sleeves. Now I save the best for last. This is the pump's housing. Personally, I think Silverstone nailed it here with the aesthetics with this diamond cut crystal design. It's like they got the balance just right to match the theme with the maximum eye candy but also remaining elegant. I can assure you when this lights up, as you'll see later in the video, you won't need a kaleidoscope anymore because you'll be mesmerized of how cool it looks. Suffice to say, this AIO goes hand in hand perfect with the G-Skill Trident Z Royale kits. Moving on, the tubes offer a decent amount of swivel. Another key selling point here is the implementation of the full-size contact plate as we previously discussed, worthy of the name Black. I mean just look at it, it's massive at 70 by 53 mm which will make sure it will grasp the full IHS of the famous Threadripper CPUs. There's no mirror finish but the machining is perfect as you can see the circular pattern from the milling process. Lastly the pump's housing is made from ABS and it's 76 mm tall. The pump is rated up to 3000 RPM and it has a pair of cables just like the fans, one 50mm long 3-pin power plug and one 510 plus 310mm long 4-pin proprietary connector with a 3-pin ARGB port. All of these will connect in series with the cables from the fans creating one big massive spaghetti junction. Then Silverstone states that the pump motor utilizes a 3-phase 6-pole design for a smoother, quieter operation when compared to most single-phase 4-pole designs. This will also improve the energy efficiency. 
Installation time. I finally managed to upgrade my testing rig thanks to this amazing Be Quiet Silent Base 802, which I will review soon as well. The first step is to remove the stock Intel mounting bracket that comes pre-installed on the pump. This is of course if you plan to use the AIO on the AM4 socket like myself. After you decide where to install the radiator, then secure the fans onto the rad with the exiting wires facing the motherboard for a cleaner wire management. My new case has a modular top plate which makes this installation a breeze. Then secure the radiator with the included short Phillips screws. Next up, take the universal backplate from the kit and make sure that the AMD writing is facing you. Apply the black dividers onto the bracket and then install the securing back bolts making sure you select the appropriate AM4 holes. On top of those, slide in the black small washers. Then attach the whole assembly onto the motherboard and then on the other side slide in the black spacer dividers. Apply the thermal paste and then just bolt down in an X pattern the pump with the help of those spring-loaded screws. As you can see there is no clearance issues around the socket area and the existing tubes have plenty of space to not interfere with the RAM slots. Regarding the spaghetti junction, well it's pretty simple if you look at the manual. I use the remote since my motherboard doesn't have a 5 volt RGB port, only 12 volts. The fans connect into the Y splitter that goes into the CPU fan port, while the pump's 3 pin goes into the AIO pump header. Regarding the RGB, make sure you connect the IO RGB proprietary plugs first into the remote, then followed by each fan into the next one. Now let's enjoy the finished look. The AIO tubes have a perfect length, not too long to be hanging unnecessarily, but not too short that will not reach the socket. Now let's fire up the RGB show. No matter the ambient lighting condition, this will bring joy into your life. The colors really pop out on both the pump and the fans. I even managed to capture on camera that smooth color effect transition which looks even cooler in real life. Right then, it's testing time. I will overclock the CPU to 3.7 GHz at 1.325 volts, and I left everything on auto RPM for real life usage patterns, but the case fans were set at their minimum value via the case's built-in control switch. First up is the Cinebench R15 test. On the left we have the CPU in stock form, while on the right I have it overclocked. Well, this was bound to happen, being my first AIO 360 in these charts, the Ice Gem 360 becomes the best performing CPU cooling solution that I have ever tested so far. Next up is Cinebench R20, which is a more modern up-to-date multi-core benchmark suit. Naturally, we should see a bigger load and thus a larger temperature figure than the R15. Here the previous pattern is preserved as we saw earlier. In IDA64 we isolate the stress test just for the CPU, therefore we should get the highest stress scenario for the CPU, but sometimes I get a higher temperature for the stock settings versus the R20 and lower values for the OC scenario. Still nothing changes in the overall hierarchy. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a great game and also a good testing title for both CPU and GPU. Still not as stressful as a synthetic torture test, but a great indicator of real life usage and here we get really good results. Now for the noise level tests, since the load is divided between multiple fans, they don't need to spin up that much. Nevertheless, the whole setup as in the pump and fans will become audible above 75% RPM, which is perfectly normal. Also here, have a listen for yourself. Well, there you have it guys. As you know, there is a lot of competition nowadays in the IO segment, but Silverstone has managed to offer an excellent and complete package with this Ice Gem series. The 360mm variant basically ticks all the boxes that you need when it comes to such a product. It offers an amazing cooling capability, then it's highly versatile because it supports any socket you can think of, besides the LGA775, all the way to the mighty Threadripper which was specifically built. The pump is one tier up when compared to most regular AIOs and then of course the maximum eye candy that comes from that elegant but very effective diamond crystal design that resides on top of the pump. Personally, I didn't like that spaghetti junction of proprietary cables but that's just nitpicking I guess. The build quality is top notch and having so much cooling headroom of course it will offer a silent operation even at medium RPM loads. All in all, like I said in the intro of the video, this is an epic AIO. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one guys. Alex out.